Hello and welcome, Max Mathias here. Uh, today I'm gonna to talk about math needed for an economics degree. So I should say that this is not a comprehensive look at exponent algebra. This will be an entire series using calculus, uh, optimization, all of that stuff. But as with all of these videos, uh, this is just meant to be an applied kind of toolkit for you to use in your economics classes. We're not gonna delve into the theory uh, behind these. So with that, let's get started. So why do you need to know exponent algebra? Well, many common economic functions employ variables raised to some power, right? And one of the most common ones that you'll see during your time uh, as an undergrad or even in grad school is the Cobb-Douglas uh, utility function, or even we use this a lot for production functions as well. So as an example of a Cobb-Douglas production function would be a firm's output Q is labor to some power A uh, and then capital to some power B. You'll also again see this for... Uh, utility functions as well, where it's a person consuming goods, uh, you'll see this all over the place, right? So how do we manipulate these equations uh, with these exponents in the thing is really, really important. I'll also be honest, from my experience teaching, algebra, doing this exponent algebra is the biggest challenge for students in solving these problems. It's not taking derivatives, right? We do calculus a lot in intermediate and advanced uh, economics classes. Most students that I've seen are fine at doing that, but it's the simplification after taking the derivatives, usually with these exponents, is where they make mistakes. So knowing this uh, is really, really important for your success going forward in econ. And then natural logarithms are really closely related, and they also feature prominently uh, in mathematical economics, primarily uh, in utility, but also if you were to go ahead and take econometrics, things like that, we in econ love natural logs, uh, and it's very much related to this kind of exponent algebra, so to speak. So it will be covered as well. So let's quickly go over exponent rules. There's three that you really need to know, um, really two, but I'll, I'll include the third one. So the first is if you have x to some power a times x to some power b, this is the same as writing it x to the power a plus b. So if you have like x squared times x to the fourth, that's the exact same as x to the sixth. Uh, this only applies when they are the same base. So if you have, you know, x to the 2 and then y to the 4, you can't do this, right? So they need to be the same base. Uh, this also works with numbers, but generally speaking, we're going to be dealing with variables in economics. Uh, on the other hand, x to the a divided by x to the b is the same as writing x to the a minus b. So if you have something in the denominator, uh, another way of writing it is basically as a negative exponent, and that is a really useful trick, right? So I could, x to the a in the numerator there, uh, I could write as one over x to the minus a. So if you ever see a minus sign, just know that basically flip it from where it currently is, and it will be positive after that. Uh, this is very common in solving utility production theory problems, right? When we're doing optimization, like a Cobb-Douglas, uh, when you're bringing that power down, usually it's negative, and then you got to put it into the denominator, or vice versa. Uh, a special case of this is x to the minus 1 is just equal to 1 over x, and so this is that uh, kind of rule I'm talking about, right? Anytime you have something to a negative exponent, that's equivalent to basically putting it in the denominator and removing that negative. So you could basically think of that 1 over x is equivalent to 1 over x to the one power. That's implicitly uh, assumed there. Uh, and then x to the power a, that entire thing raised to the power b, is x to the a times b. You won't see this very common in economics, but if it ever does pop up, it's good to know. Uh, but really those first two, right? So addition, when you have a multiplication of same bases, or subtraction uh, when you have division. Also just really useful to remember that kind of a common algebra trick that you'll see uh, people do to solve these problems. If you're ever wondering how we get a particular solution, uh, if something's in the denominator, you can move it up into the numerator, so to speak, by just making the, uh, making the exponent negative. Same thing, right? If something's in the uh, numerator and we wanna put it in the denominator, if you just put a negative on the exponent, you can move it into the denominator and that's the same thing. All right, so on to uh, natural logarithm rules. Again, we normally just say the log, right? So you're gonna take the log of something. Whenever we say log in econ, we mean the natural log, right? No log base 10, uh, anything like that, or log to any other base. Natural log, right, which is technically a log base E, uh, is what we're talking about. So if you have log uh, to the X times Y, that's the same as splitting it apart log to the X, or not log to the X, log X plus log Y. Uh, one thing that I see students mess up all the time is this doesn't work when the addition is inside the log, right? So log 
in parentheses x plus y is not the same as log x plus log y. You gotta be really, really careful there. On the other hand, uh, log to the x over y is equal to log x minus log y. You'll, you're starting to notice that kind of this minus is translating to that negative power uh, that was in uh, the exponent math on the last slide. Again, this doesn't work when that subtraction is inside the log. So log x minus log y is not the same as log x minus y. Really easy mistake to make. Uh, I've seen it done plenty of times and I, I have made that mistake as well. Uh, and then log of x to some power a, the rule is you can basically bring that exponent down out front. That's the same as a times log x. That one is very useful for Cobb-Douglas utility functions. It makes the algebra a lot easier. I will do utility and all of that stuff, right? We're building up uh, the base to get there in subsequent videos, but that is a really good uh, trick to know. So let's test your knowledge. Uh, we're gonna rewrite log x to the a, y to the b as the sum of logs. We have that very complex uh, x to the a over x to the b times y to the c, and then we have uh, that really big log thing, which I won't say, into a single logarithm. So what I recommend you do is pause the video right now, try and work these out using the rules we just talked about on the previous slides. Uh, and so with that, here are the answers. So for the first one, right, we're gonna use basically two tricks here. We're gonna use the bringing the exponent powers uh, down from that third bullet, and then we're also going to use uh, the multiplication to separate, right? It doesn't matter how you do this. Uh, so you could, first of all, re basically, because you have this multiplication inside the log, you could rewrite this as log x to the a plus log y to the b and then bring them down. I think that's the easiest way to go, uh, but it's up to you on how you do it. For that one then, uh, the next one, log x to the a over x to the b times y to the c, you will get, again, combining here, order of operations doesn't really matter. Uh, you will get a minus b log x plus c log y. So the big thing there is we're using that exponent rule of x to the power a over x to the power b is the same as x to the a minus b. At that point, then you can split the logs and then bring them out front. And then with that very complex uh, equation there, right, we can combine this into a single logarithm and it is going to be log uh, x to the a times x to the b. There's that addition over x to the c, that's that subtraction, right, that enters there. The kind of trick question is you gotta make sure that you distribute your negative through on the uh, log y, so that would be minus d plus e log y, so then uh, y to the e is in the numerator, y to the d is in the denominator there. So hopefully uh, you got all of those. If you did, then you have more than enough knowledge of doing these to basically make it through almost any economics class as far as exponent algebra goes. But if you have any questions or anything like that, let me know. Uh, but if not, thank you so much for watching. If you got anything out of this, please consider uh, liking and or subscribing, and I'll see you next time.